What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another late night in the Brew Lab with me, Lone Fox, your brewmaster in chief. And tonight in the Brew Lab, I'm coming at you with a mono black aggro deck that I've just like been slapping the mythic ladder with. Uh, I had a bit of a eureka moment during last night's gameplay footage where um, we were put a whole playset of the Reckon and Bankbuster into a mono white aggro deck. And I was like, hmm, what other mono colored aggro deck do we think this would fit into nicely? And uh, I brewed this up in uh, 10 minutes. I mean, I just like was like, okay, okay, next card, next card, next card. I kind of knew exactly what I was doing. I threw it together. I jumped onto the ladder with it and I just went boom, 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 like slamming people's faces. So without further ado, let's jump into tonight's brew. We'll do the usual. I'll take it from the top, kind of run through the deck, describe the various play lines and interactions, and um, then we'll jump into some gameplay footage and hopefully, uh, you know, show off those interactions uh, against some opponents. And then uh, we'll jump back in at the end with my final thoughts and I'll give you guys a little sideboard action for those best of three gamers. Uh, so at the top, we've got a full play set of Blood Chief's Thirst. I don't think I really need to reintroduce this card. Great early game removal great lame game, uh, late game removal, also hits Planeswalkers, fantastic. Then we've got a full playset of Okiba Reckoner Raid, one of the new little one-drop sagas from Kamigawa. Uh, the first two chapters just do a little bit of gain and drain. Opponent loses one life, you gain one life. Don't ever scoff at that. Sometimes that can win you the game. And uh, eventually comes back as Nizumi, the road captain, which uh, is a 2-2 with Menace, and it gives vehicles you control Menace. So not a, an amazing card, like definitely Kumano faces Kakazan, uh, and, you know, and it's uncommon as well. The mono red one uh, that is also one mana is probably a little bit better. But uh, again, the gain and drain is, is relevant because of a few things which I'll get to as we get through the deck. Next up, we've got a full playset of Blade of the Oni. Two mana, menace, three one. This kind of, kind of fits the same slot uh, you know, or, the, or, or renders the similar service that um, the uh, intrepid adversary renders in the mono white aggro deck. It's a 3 1 for 2, which can crew the Reckoner Bankbuster. So keep that in mind. But also, you know, later in the game, when you can uh, get up to 4 mana, you can pay 2 colorless and 2 black and, and reconfigure or equip your Blade of the Oni onto a creature, and that creature has now got base, power, and toughness 5-5, five, five, gains menace, and is a black demon in addition to its other types. That's not really that um, relevant in, in this particular brew, but, uh, you know, sometimes we can equip this to, you know, Nighthawk Scavenger, you know, 5-5 five, five Scavenger with flying uh, Death Touch and Lifelink coming through, and menace. Not bad. Uh, <laughs> then, we've got a full playset of Infernal Grasp. So again, going back to that gain and drain, I don't like to run Infernal Grasp in decks where I can't at least gain a little bit of life to mitigate the life loss, uh, which is the only downside to Infernal Grasp. Otherwise, it's just fantastic removal. Two mana, destroy target creature, instant speed. So I'm happy running it because, like I said, of, of the life gain that we have in the deck. And the first card that does a little bit of that is a Keeper Reckon and Raid, but there's more coming. So stay tuned for the rest of the deck tech. Then we've got a full playset of Life of Toshiro Umezawa. The first two chapters are fantastically versatile, kind of no matter what the board state is, you're going to get some value from it. Uh, let's just say the opponent has no blockers and give your creature that's about to attack in plus two plus two, gain more, you know, do more damage. Great. Let's say the opponent has a, you know, low statted threat on board, something like uh, Elite Spellbinder or I don't know, there's plenty of, uh, especially against Mono White, things that only have one toughness. Um, so you can choose the second option, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So Life of Toshiro Umezawa can also be a little bit of a removal spell in some cases. Or you just, uh, you know, make the creature that was going to be able to block and trade with your creature now is going to just block and die. Um, but if there are no creatures on board, maybe post sweeper or whatever, uh, you can just gain two life so i love the versatility there's almost never a time when the deck uh, when when the card uh doesn't get you some value and then eventually it flips into memory of toshiro which is not a fantastic card but you can pay one life tap it and add one black mana uh and you can spend that mana to cast instance and sorcery spells you know sometimes you're missing that like fourth land to kick the blood chief's thirst or what have you 
you can tap memory of Toshiro and uh, only pay one life, which is not huge, and uh, still be able to cast your instants and sorceries. Which brings us to a full playset of Reckon and Bankbuster. The perfect playline so far that I've been just slapping people with is uh, turn one Okiba Reckon and Red, turn two Reckon and Bankbuster, turn three essentially anything. I mean, we could play a Biting Palm Ninja, we could play Blade of the Oni. There's, there's plenty of ways that on turn three we can crew the bank buster and start attacking in straight away and then of course all the rest of the good things that the bank buster does you know draws you cards ramps a little bit and eventually poops out a guy that uh, or a girl you know pilot a pilot that uh, can crew the bank buster itself so fantastic addition uh, then we've got a full playset of biting palm ninja which is in a way taking a similar role uh, as elite spellbinder in the mono white deck Mm, it doesn't have flying, but it does have menace. Uh, the effect isn't an ETB effect. It has to happen when it, uh, you know, deals combat damage to a player. But the fact that it has ninjutsu is a bit of an upside. So anyway, the point is, it re you know reveals the opponent's hand, and you can choose, uh, yeah, any non-land card from it, and you exile that card. Unlike the elite spellbinder, where they can still cast it later, it just gets taxed by two colorless. Biting Farm Ninja, that card is gone, exiled forever. And importantly, it has three toughness, so it can crew the Bankbuster. Then we've gone for a full playset of the Nighthawk Scavenger. Talking again about things that sort of mitigate the life loss from the Infernal Grasp. It's a uh, power and toughness. Oh, sorry, it's toughness. It's always going to be three, unless perhaps you, you know, configure the Blade of the Oni on it. But the power scales up based upon the number of different types of cards in your opponent's graveyard so it could potentially get pretty pretty big the fact that we have a little bit of removal or you know the opponents just casting instants and sorceries that end up straight in the graveyard sometimes we can cast this on turn three and it's already like a three three or something like that which is great and um evasive threats uh with flying also mean that we can easily ninjutsu things in if we're not hard, hard casting the biting palm ninja we can ninjutsu it in uh onto the flyer and uh, get its effect which brings us to our four drops where we're running a couple of copies of Soren the Mirthless and a couple of copies of the Blood Veil Purveyor uh, we'll start with the Purveyor 5-6 Frampler for four mana non-legendary are you kidding me and the thing just you know attacks for more and more and more every turn depending on how many spells the opponents cast of course giving the opponent a blood token is is not a great thing uh, but there's some decks that just really can't take advantage of that or don't want to because they want to keep their cards in, cards in hand. Um, and even if they do have open mana to cycle a few things away to reduce the eventual attacking power of the Blood Fail Purveyor, it doesn't matter. 5-6 is good enough as it is. This is often our finisher uh, going in over the top <clears throat> and slamming the opponent's face and very tough to remove with that 6, um, you know, toughness booty that uh, the Purveyor is cruising around with and that brings us to the final card of the deck a couple copies of Sorin the Mirthless we just need a little bit of extra card advantage you know the plus one ability allows us to look at the top card of your library you may reveal that card and put it into your hand if you do you lose life equal to the mana value not such a big deal because um, you know there's not that many expensive cards in the decks of course don't forget if you draw uh, or, you know if you reveal a swamp uh, or any of your other lands um, the mana value is zero, so you lose no life, which is just a free draw. Uh, the minus two poops out a two three flyer with lifelink, which is great. A little bit of extra life gain is always good. A little bit of extra, you know, air force power is fantastic. And then the minus seven is a little win con in and of itself. It almost never goes off, but if it does, you can do three thirteen damage to any target. Obviously, you're going to go face with the thing, and you gain thirteen life. So, if that ever gets to go off, you're obviously loving life. And that is the deck. Very simple. Mono black aggro. Which brings us to our mana base. We've got 18 swamps, 2 hives, 2 takanumas, 2 agademes, which we can potentially cast for uh, 7 and bring back, you know, one creature on every spot of the curve. Normally, unfortunately, we have uh, Okiba, Reckon Raid, and uh, Life of Toshiro Umezawa that are not creatures as well as Reckon and Bankbuster. So mostly we're using it to bring back our three drops and um, our Blood Bale Purveyor. And that's the deck. Mono Black Aggro featuring a full playset of the Reckon and Bankbuster. I hope you like it. Let's jump into some games. Ranked 
Come on, a black aggro. Go. Let's keep the streak alive. Worst matchups? I don't know. Probably like ores of control or something like that would just be the, the worst possible thing to end up against, but. Okay. I'll keep it. We don't have a one drop, but uh, we've got a two and three, so. And four. Playing against the law. Oops. Cancel. Agademes. The Undercrypt. Wanna white? Yep, sure looks like it. Hmm. We just play the ninja and uh, attack. Opponent. Talia. That's terrible. Skadoosh. Menace is great. Also bigger than Italia. But I have a feeling there's a, a Luminarch Aspirant. Or a Elite Spellbinder coming our way very shortly. What did I tell you? Scavenger, no? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's uh, have a look at your hand, bro. That is just... Ah. <laughs> the worst. I don't know if I should have gone for the uh, the planeswalker there, but hey, what can you do? Yep. And he's probably just going to follow it up with a portable hole on our bank buster. Oh no, he can't because of the tax on the Talia. Maybe I should have gotten rid of the Talia so we can cast Sorin, but these uh, threats just keep getting bigger. Bloodvale Purveyor. Try getting through that. I guess they could do something like a um, Valorous Stance or what have you, but... Hmm. 
Opponent's <clears throat> breaking a little bit, which is making me very happy. I had a, a sinking sensation. I was about to lose the match there for a second, but... Oh, goodness. Six six Frampler coming through. Oh, baby. I think we just won. I mean, the opponent bricking definitely helps. He wasn't able to cast his planeswalker and things, but. Off you go, Mono White. Game one goes to Mono Black. I mean, back into the numbers with this deck today. I was sitting in like the 90 something yesterday and. On to the next one. Ran out of beverages. Might need to sneak off to the fridge. Quiz, Quazan, Quizan. I kind of just want my one drop. The uh, the uh, you know the one. What's it called? Uh, Okiba Reckoner Raid. Is it going to be Esper or Azorius? This could be terrible. Let's see if we can beat them before, you know, they can do their thing. You might have something like a... Fateful Absence. Fading Hope. Boring. Have a look at your hand, boy. What you got? Bye bye. Off you go. So definitely Azorius control with uh, Jingitaxius. Bounce spell on somewhere. Sure. It should. You know, it doesn't have the menace counter on it. It shouldn't give you that trigger. But that's just me. So now I'm like in a situation where I'm very, very worried about. That's enough land now. I'm very, very worried about um, Doomscar. Ooh. Nine damage coming through. Not bad. <laughs> Sorry, Azorius. A little too fast for you, wasn't it? Off you go. <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you guys. 
please copy this one take it for a spin on the ladder if anybody asks you where you got it send them to the brew lab i haven't seen anyone running a mono black aggro deck uh like at all and i'm just destroying people with this thing on to the next one <clears throat> Jam, Jamo, one, two, three. Jamo, 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 one, two, three. Oh, what? Mirror match? Are you kidding me? We have options. I think we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. Swing for five. despair what a card but you burnt your treasure on that one sure I was uh, you know dreading this but what can you do I had to like have it happen before it's too late. <clears throat> it's a pity about that one toughness on the blade. If it was just two. But it'll be in standard longer than shambling gas. No, it won't. What am I talking about? Uh, oh, yes, it will. Post rotation, shambling gas leaves. Good riddance. <laughs> Oh, massacre, huh? We're flooding. Yay, flood first. Next match. <clears throat> Seven lands in a row. Get stuffed, man. <laughs> At least the games are quick. I know quite quickly when it's not going to... You know, there's no way you, you, you pull that one back from the brink. So you can just concede and move on to the next one. But uh, that's also why I want to start including a little bit of um, best of three sideboard guides at the end of my videos um, because you know those of you who enjoy it can uh, take these decks and play them oh <gasps> the asian avenger fellow content creator i don't think i've ever played against him oh this is a scary one for me i have to win this he's probably streaming Not Esper, please.
It's always nice when you end up against another content creator. He's very good. He's obviously a very good gamer. Kaito. Slam. Unfortunately, there's like farewells, doom scars, all sorts of stuff in this list. So we need to make this quick. Like, really quick. <clears throat> Let's send two Kaitos way. Nice. Very good card. Now, what do we have here? Ugh, my least favorite planeswalker. For annihilation. Okay. Okay. We have many options. We could uh, activate the hive. We could, uh, you know, equip. We could draw a card. For two... And then ninjutsu. Yeah, I know. It's my go, dude. <laughs> I will. And I, the generous one. I hate this planeswalker so much, like, with a passion. It really, like, really, really bothers me. <laughs> Doomscar? No. Farewell? No. You really want to lose your cave of the frost giant? I'm okay with that. I'm also bluffing. I might have some removal. Okay. Okay. In which case... See what you got. Got rid of the sweeper. Yes. 
Did we get him? Did we just win? Good minions are loyal and deadly. Maybe. I think we won. For the sake of all Innistrad, my will must you wish to know my secret. Oh. Very well. <laughs> Man, that feels good. Man, that feels so good. I hope that ends up on his YouTube channel. <laughs> ah. On to the next one. Undefeated with one concede, uh, admittedly. But, uh, yeah, I still think... I'm giving you guys a very good uh, display here of uh, the potential power of this brew. Hmm, this might be uh, Naya runes or something. Sure. Time to start using some of our removal. It's a uh, Niagara, just with strict Proctor. How do they always have two of these things? Is just beyond mind boggling. That's actually fine. That's very fine. Kasha, baby. <laughs> guys, guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this has been one of the best decks I've built in the last two, three weeks. It's on par with the uh, Galvanic Iteration uh, Despair deck that I whipped up, which was actually a bit of a copy on uh, Mono Black Magic stuff. This is something that is just mine. Like, I haven't seen it. I didn't net deck it. I didn't get any ideas from anywhere. I just built it, and it's slapping. And I really am proud of it. And I, I wish uh, for you all to, to copy it and enjoy it and, um, you know, tell everybody where you found it, <laughs> please, and send them my way. All right, I think this is probably going to be the last match of the night. I still want to give a bit of time to my final thoughts on the matter and perhaps a little bit of sideboard action. So, yeah, let's try and end on a win. Rick, 17. We're on the play. Uh, we're on the draw, so I will definitely mulligan this hand. Much better. Mm -hmm, pardon me. Oh, 
Mono white, mono white, mono white, mono white, over and over and over and over again. Same old jazz. We need to get rid of the Luminarch Aspirin before it's too late. Which is a pity, I would have rather played something else there, but... Hopefully this time he doesn't have a second one. I'd be surprised if they don't, though. Alright. Our main tech against Mono White is the life gain from, uh... From, you know... We've got a bit of it. Um, okay. Bankbuster, Blood Chief's Thirst. Sure. Be that way. You'll probably take the ninja. And that's okay. I honestly don't really mind what he plays, uh, what he takes. So, hmm, okay, crew three. Uh, 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 two things that can crew three. Uh, uh, uh. Took the ninja. Ooh, extra land is fantastic. You want to block? Block. See if I care. <clears throat> nice. Mono White doesn't like trading. They need their creatures to stay on board. What? You took the wrong card, mate. Why would you go for Toshiro? It makes no sense. Now, do we draw a card or do we attack? I think I'm going to draw. Might get some removal. Argh! Yeah, well. That's terrible, terrible, terrible. It's probably going to boast the usher. So. Good game. And we're flooding. All right. All right. Another one of those. But that's going to be it for this night's uh, gameplay footage. I think I did a very good job of um, illustrating all of the various play lines and interactions. Uh, we got to do, you know, we, we played we played all of our four drafts. We got a win in with the um, Blood Veil Purveyor. Uh, oh, we didn't cast Soren, I don't think, at any point tonight. But that's neither here nor there. The bank buster definitely shining. Uh, you know, the menacing threats, the life gain from the flyers, everything just coming together into this sweet little uh, mono black aggro package. Very efficient, very low to the ground, not too, uh, you know, intensive on the wild cards. Um, so, as far as a sideboard for a deck like this, hmm. Well, there's one thing that I'm thinking about is maybe just getting rid of the Agadims. We didn't get mana screwed at all, but the fact that there's no, like, real one drop to bring back, and there's only one two drop to bring back, and you can only bring back, like, one thing from each, uh, you know, uh, mana value, so you can't, like, bring back two three drops or something. Uh, bah! But it is a nice little utility land, and it, like I said, we weren't mana screwed at any point uh, during tonight's gameplay, so I think... I'll leave the Agademes as it is. And um, as far as the sideboard, I would go for some like uh, discard and hand hate and stuff like that. So perhaps like some Dread Fugue. I would throw in, um, go blank. Actually, no, we've got enough hand hate. Hmm, man, tough one, hey? How do we make a best of three? list out of this one hmm. what was our worst match up there you know maybe put in like a bit more removal 
Oh, I have a good idea. I would put in Henrika. Maybe replacing the um, Sorin or the Bloodveil Purveyor, but probably the Sorin. Hmm. Tough one. I, I'm honestly at a bit of a loss here. What would be really good against maybe some massacres? Hmm. It's a tough call. I think I would also go for some of the um, mech that we had uh, yesterday. So just like kind of pretty expensive sideboard cards right now. Uh, different type of removal, like some exile. Check for traps. And, um, I think because we have plenty of enchantments in the main board with Akiba and uh, Life of Toshiro, I think we can uh, put in the new soul transfer that we had in the mono black deck. And we go for three of, and we'd be sort of replacing maybe the Biting Palm Ninja, like sort of switching the deck into a more control, mono black control deck, rather than uh, just being aggro. I think that's a way to switch strategy that would effectively um, beat a lot of matchups. Hmm. So if that is the plan... And go more controlly. Hmm. <laughs> this was a a weird one that I just didn't know. <laughs> I was a lot more hyped on it during um, spoilers, but now I'm a bit meh on it, to be honest. I was thinking maybe some Warlock classes, just the two of. And we've got one card left. Oh, I know exactly which one. We go like slightly bigger, have a higher top end, uh, and swing in a couple of copies of uh, the West gate regent so we can trim because we need to have 15 cards in the sideboard and that's what i uh, that's how i would do it so um i hope you've kind of just been following along with my train of thought here my plan is to, against certain matches, switch into a more control deck, uh, specifically like mono white aggro, that type of stuff. If we really feel like they're beating us at the speed game, we can just bring in the massacres, uh, bring in the soul transfers. Um, uh, otherwise, if we're going for a, like a, against a more mid range matchup, maybe bring in the Westgate Regents as a you know a five drop to to bring our curve a little bit higher and have a, a a bigger threat that's tougher to get rid of uh, you know the ward discarded card is great and it just keeps growing bigger the more damage it gets in for uh, also you know if you had to sub out Sorin and bring in Henrika uh, so like maybe drop one Sorin bring in one Henrika and then two Westgate Regents uh, and maybe remove some of the Biting Palm Ninjas then you'd have like this formidable flying force that you can buff with the Henrikas uh, uh, Infernal Seer's um, 
little second ability there. Uh, Warlock class, just maybe a little bit of extra card draw and an additional little bit of gain and drain. And then check for traps just to have a um, little bit more discard alongside the fighting palm, uh, the biting palm ninja, um, where we want to you know maybe look at the opponent's hand. I've gone for a full three of in the sideboard. I think that's a great uh, addition. We might uh, replace something like Life of Toshiro um, and and bring in uh, those for some additional hand hate. And that's uh, that's my best of three guide for this mono black aggro deck. I hope you liked it. And uh, I will see you all tomorrow for some fresh, fresh brews. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And this is Lone Fox from the Brew Lab, signing out. Peace, y'all.